Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. So today I want to talk about something that has kind of been on my mind recently since I've started doing these gameplay videos, which is somewhat around how you play Star Citizen and what it is you get up to. Now, ultimately, there is no wrong way or right way to play. It is entirely up to you what you do, what you want to do, uh, and how you go about doing it. What I want to suggest well, since I've started doing these gameplay videos, a lot of people, a lot of comments have been saying that they never considered playing the game the way I do, which I will talk about in a second, um, and that they're going to give it a go. Now, I found this quite surprising because, to me, the, what, I, what I tend to do in the game now that we've got Persistence and 322 has come around is what I, I have always considered Cloud Imperium and Chris Roberts to be intended for Star Citizen, the, the type of just living in the verse, not really having a goal as such, just existing and reacting to what happens, what I find, what other players and people are doing. Now, of course, you can play missions, you can do whatever you want, and as a disclaimer, what we play now in the alpha and likely the beta as well, is definitely not what Star Citizen is. So naturally, we're going to be playing it a little differently to a finished product with all of the core tech, all of the game systems, all of the missions and features and career paths. But I did find it quite surprising how many people were saying that they hadn't considered to play it this way. I think what's happened is we've all fallen into a bit of a an alpha rut where we just do what makes the most money because it's what allows us to buy other ships and it seems like the money meta is the go-to mechanic or the go-to gameplay that players tend to to sort of shift towards. Whereas I've never been concerned about making lots of money, I always just want to be in the verse, experience the verse, uh, and enjoy the random interactions and the, the complete comparisons to what you can find from one day to the next. Now again, I will keep reiterating that you can do what you want in-game. You can play it how you want to play it. I'm not here to tell you that you should do it differently. But after seeing so many people saying that they really like this style of gameplay, I just wanted to shed a bit of light into why that is and where Star Citizen is going. Because the way I play right now, since 322, that's going to be becoming more and more apparent and possible as the game continues to flesh out. And as we have more missions and more locations to visit and more reasons to be in the verse building and base building and doing all sorts of stuff star citizen will start to flourish exactly how chris and his team have been wanting it to be now for a bit of context i backed the game in i think it was november of 2012 so straight after the kickstarter i was paying attention to it i was then covering it on youtube since 2013, 2014, I think, and I've been streaming it since 2015. So I have been intently or intensely following Star Citizen since its conception, which a lot of the time we would hear from Chris very regularly about what he wanted for Star Citizen, how he sees it, what he sees this game being, uh, and how he wants people to experience it. So what I'm going to do is just do a bit more of this sort of organic gameplay that I tend to do where I'm just milling around in the verse, seeing what I find. There is a big C2 over there, so we'll have to scan that. Uh, and just talk about why I am excited for what's going to happen in the near term and long term of Star Citizen and why this kind of gameplay I highly suggest trying out because it can get really monotonous when you're jumping in or spawning in at a, um, a planet-side location like... Microtech and the, you know, or the Lawville, and just doing the same thing to try and make as much money as possible. Anyway, the C2 is fair game, but it's a little too big for my little vulture. Now, one other thing to consider is that we are getting a lot of new players in, uh, and a lot of the old backers have been taking a break. They might be coming back a little bit more now, so, you know, we may see a little bit more of this understanding of the idea of Star Citizen, um, but for a lot of new backers, all you can really go by is what previous games have done and what they have tried to do. 
And I just want to reiterate how Star Citizen is to be something truly special and different from anything else because of the way it's being made. And the way it's being made is to focus primarily on emergent gameplay rather than missions created by the developers. Not to say that, you know, the missions created by developers won't be cool or interesting. They already are. But what I mean is with the dynamic economy on its way and all of these systems that CIG build that allow us, the players, to do what we want to do and do it the way we want to do it, the game is going to focus more and more on what are the players are doing and how that impacts everyone else. So, whereas there may be some missions allow, like requiring you to go and deliver some goods from A to B, there will also be missions from players requiring goods to be delivered to them or picked up from them and delivered to someone else. And it's through beacons and through, say, the TDD or the Trade and Development Division where players will be able to post job listings for anything and everything and then us the players uh, you know other players will be able to either take those missions on or do something else now it's going to heavily rely on player interaction not necessarily face to face like if you want to be primarily solo player um then you can do or you like i i generally at the moment with all the issues with multiplayer i generally just fly around in my own ship doing what i want to do um responding and reacting and saying hello to other players while I see them but not necessarily grouping together at this time due to things like desync so as time goes on we are going to see a lot more missions for players to work for other players and as I say not even directly not even face to face but a mission like someone could be building a base out here they want some goods or some construction materials to to go and do so then they will put a job listing out there and another player can gather those materials or pick those materials up and go and post them or deliver them to that player. Now, I also want to say to the new players that if someone else is telling you how you should be playing Star Citizen, including me, of course, don't listen to them. You, you can do it how you want to do. If you feel like you want to do something specific, just go and do it. The point is, this game is is freedom for everyone to do what they feel like doing without restrictions and CIG are just building systems and mechanics to allow us to pursue exactly what it is that we want to do. Now of course there is still a long road to go before the game is at the point that it can support that kind of gameplay but this has always been Chris's vision and we are going to see hopefully a lot this year with the core tech the foundational tech coming in and more game systems like cargo hauling, um, maybe even bounty hunting, and potentially the first steps into base building, we're going to see this kind of gameplay come along even more. And for me, the first sort of taste of this actual gameplay that I had was in 322 when these settlements came around, where I no longer had to live in a place like, you know, one of the main cities to do my, you know, to do my work, I could actually go and live in a place like this, like I do with Astor's Clearing. It gives me that sense of being in a place for the first time where I'm able to just exist and I'm able to just spawn in day after day and see what's left for me, see what's happened from the days past. And I've always felt that the alpha that we have is a double-edged sword. It's I'm glad we have it because I do enjoy playing it and when it works, it is just like nothing else I've ever experienced. But at the same time, it can be the most frustrating thing ever and it doesn't show what Star Citizen is. As I say, this is this is probably the alpha probably shows off about 5% of what Star Citizen the persistent universe is going to be. The focus right now with Squadron or the the focus before Squadron reached its, its latest milestone is purely combat. They need to get the combat sorted because Squadron 42, you are in the military, it is, or the Navy, it is what it's, you know, that's that's the focal point, so that's the pri that's their uh, priorities. But now that that is in polishing and optimizing, they are really heavily focusing on more industrial gameplay, um, and everything else that is to come with that. Let's just see if we can tow this first. 
Apologies that this video is not very, um, it's a bit spitbally when it comes to talking. No, we can't track through it. I think it's shields are on, yeah. Uh, it's a bit spitbally. I haven't really scripted this because I wanted it to just be a bit of gameplay and me just talking genuinely about what I, why I am excited for Star Citizen and why I play it the way I do. As I say, if you want to focus on just making a ton of cash, go for it. But the problem is, it'll be wiped. It'll constantly be wiped until it is at version 1.0 release candidate. Now, can we bust in here? Unfortunately, I don't have a multi-tool. If they've left it unlocked, I can get in. Otherwise, I'm screwed. Looks like they might have cargo in there. Okay. Oh, and that's storage. But yeah, for me, the most fun I've had has been in this patch uh, of recent because... Nah, I can't. I'll have to shoot it. Soft death it. Because of just how free it is to do things like salvaging or mining or looting cargo and selling cargo and just living at somewhere like Astor's Clearing. And what we're going to see is a lot more points of interest, many more uh, towns, cities, settlements. What is happening? Very strange. Uh, and so much more. There are things like these hangars and the new UI, the star map. Uh, what else is there? There's so much more that's going to be coming out this year that it's just going to take what we have, which is enjoyable, but very rough around the edges, and push it further to being a more polished feeling game. Um, like Cargo, for example, is going to see a huge increase in, in functionality. Bear with me. We're going to see a lot more going on with the economy, a very important update with the economy to just dictate what players tend to get up to and where they put their time. Come on now, there we go. Oh no, that's just shot that off. There we go. Oof. Right, let's go and see if it's dropped anything. Has it dropped anything? Yeah, no. Okay, I had nothing in its inventory. But like I was just talking about living, a, like building a scrapyard recently, um, which is something I've been really, really wanting to do since we saw things like um, the SRV come along. And a friend of mine, Webby, he, he mentioned how cool it would be to just build a little settlement or a little homestead next to mine and we can trade with each other and like this is where the game is going where you are going to live and exist in this world and there'll be so much stuff for you to do and you could pursue the the you the credit you know you could really go to town and, and try your hardest to make as much money as possible but for a lot of my characters I will just relax make a bit of cash doing whatever like trading items trading pieces of you know in a scrapyard especially people come over and offer me however much for a component i'll probably just let them take it because i'm not well i wouldn't i'd need to get a decent amount for it to be fair but it's the gameplay that i'm here for and the interactions that i'm here for and star citizen will allow for both and i am so excited to see that come along this year Especially as we start getting more points of interest where players will start going, or increasing the player count, which, once we get server meshing, I think we're going to see a lot of players come back, um, who have been maybe taking a break, because a lot of the people have been waiting for core tech. Hmm. Maybe we should try this side. But also, if they can continue to increase the player count, that will be even better, because it gives us so much more... Uh, potential findings since persistence has come in that has been a big game changer for me uh, with just seeing a history to a server and finding pretty much 90% of the stuff that I 
have or sell. I have I have probably looted from something from somewhere. Not uh, you know, by the time I found it, the player who had been carrying it or or using it is, is long gone. Um, but yeah, also in terms of keeping and taking care of our ships, there is going to be a lot of change going on there with insurance and timers. Okay, there we go. Let's just disintegrate now. And the want to look after your ship. What's happening here? Why are you not working? There we go. So yeah, as I say, this is more just... Some more generalized gameplay of, of what I tend to do and just floating around and seeing what's around. There is no wrong way or right way, but I feel like a lot of people are missing out on a very fun experience of how to play Star Citizen. And I just want to highlight that it is a great way to do it and it feels like you are just a part of the verse. You're just living in the verse, seeing what you find and making the most of these locations and the game systems so i suppose what i'm trying to say and to stop the video from being just endless minutes of me waffling on you can be whoever you want to be in the verse be that good bad a mixture of the two and eventually regardless of who you are or who you want to be be that a racer a pi you know pirate a hauler a bounty hunter a mercenary a salvager scavenger a miner we will all be living in the game world and existing together. I will probably have multiple different uh, accounts. Well, I already have multiple accounts, but for my org, we will have multiple headquarters, um, storage areas where we will be working together as a group, seeing what we can find and having a, a strong goal behind us for what we are trying to do and grow the org. Uh, but on, that, on my personal account, I'll probably just have a small single shack or homestead where I can live and I can tune my dragonfly in, its, in the garage and overclock the components and see if I can make make it go faster for the, the race every weekend that is, you know, local to where I live. Don't take the alpha, what we have now. Oh boy, talking of which. Don't take this alpha as Star Citizen. This is just a test bed. This is just a place where they can try different mechanics. They can test different processes and build the game and its foundation to see how it should be and, and where they want it to be. This is not Star Citizen. This is going to be, you know, Star Citizen will be so much more than what we are currently playing in the alpha. So expect everything to change. And it is changing for the good. I know a lot of people don't like it when they come in and reduce the amount of things you can earn from, say, the bounty manifests, and that is all just part and parcel of this overall balancing pass to make the game make sense. Because right now it doesn't. So embrace it all. Embrace the chaos. Be excited for this year, as I am very excited. And we will see each other in the verse. I have no doubts about it. Oh, wow. We will see each other in the verse. Front impact and we'll have a lot of stories to tell sitting around a campfire. And I can't wait. Anyway, I'm going to get to... No, I'm not because I don't have a multi-tool. I'm going to head back uh, to Astor's Clearing and just chill out there for a little bit. I just wanted to take some time to just explain that no matter what you do in the verse, it is up to you. You can be who you want to be. You can do what you want to do. Don't let anyone tell you differently. But try something like this. Because existing and reacting to what comes is a lot of fun. Because you never know what you're going to see day to day. Even if it's just a case of taking on a random mission to put pen to paper. To just get you started. Even if the mission fails. Which most of them tend to at this time. Allow it to just guide you to a location and see what comes of that. You will not regret it. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. I apologize that I waffled on and didn't really have this as an organized script. And it was just a load of words. I hope it makes sense. And hopefully we will see the replication layer come in. Or the split of the replication layer come in any day now. Because we are needing that. 
before we can get on with server meshing. There is a lot coming this year, and as soon as we get information about 323, I will get a video out about what features are coming in the first quarter patch, what's coming in the second quarter, uh, and then hopefully beyond as well. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you do appreciate my videos, please do consider subscribing. We are very, very close to 60,000 subscribers, which is just phenomenal. And also, come and hang out over at twitch.tv forward slash supermacbrother. We often have deep conversations about the game like this, uh, but with other people interacting, not just me going on about it. Uh, you are all more than welcome over there, whether you are new or old to the game. Uh, hit the thumbs up if you don't mind, it does the channel a big favour, and tick that notification bell if you'd like to be notified when my videos go live. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.